Usually I was uh, one of the only women coaches. It was generally a male-dominated milieu. It almost seemed as though the girls wanted to prove everyone wrong and they just, they stuck with the sport. My name is Tina Takahashi. I'm a sixth degree black belt in Judo. I own Tina Takahashi Martial Arts and Fitness, and I run this school and teach with my husband and my boys. Okay, let's start with a little run, and then we'll just do a short warm up. Shake. I started judo as soon as I could walk. I always wanted to do what my brothers were doing. And my father was a judo competitor. He was in the Royal Canadian Air Force. And we moved to Germany for four years. And then when he moved back, he started Uplands Judo Club. So he taught us a, a lot about judo and competition. Probably the best judo instructor I've ever had. And I had good role models too. My brother Ray was the youngest wrestler at the Olympic Games uh, in 76. He was only 17 years old. I always wanted to do what they were doing. I followed their footsteps, basically. My dream was just to do the best that I could. And once I made that commitment, everything was second to that. You know, when I was preparing for a tournament, I would think of it 24 hours a day. You know, I was, everything I did was towards that goal. It's something that you have to commit and something that you have to really love to do. So you just do like an uchikomi, an entry, and then torn you're gonna... Oh. My father took a, an early retirement from the Royal Canadian Air Force when I was about nine, and he opened up Takahashi Dojo. My father, Pierre Trudeau, and Justin Trudeau. Awesome. This month's issue of Black Belt Magazine, April May issue. We spent all our summers there, and we never missed class. For a long time, we were four members of the dojo. <laughs> so if one of us missed, it was not very many members. So at the time, there wasn't very many people that knew what judo was. In fact, we were one of the first martial arts schools in Ottawa. There was only, I think, two other schools that had martial arts. So I remember I didn't want to seem different, so I would make my girlfriend promise not to say anything if I was away at a judo tournament and won a medal. You know, I wouldn't let her tell anybody. Not late? Okay. Shoulder oh, rolls. I'm, I'm usually late. Oh, you're usually late. Go ahead. My name's Johanna, I'm 25, and I coach wrestling. bit of a troubled kid when I was younger and I came home from school one day with a note saying I wanted to join wrestling and my dad's like whoa why do you want to do that like that's weird that you sure you don't want to do anything else but I joined I stuck with it uh, so that was grade three it felt as though it was like an outlet for me because I'd never really been interested in sports before I was always getting in trouble at school I was very much a hands-on kid so now I was able to be hands-on but I wasn't getting in trouble for it anymore 
So it became sort of an outlet for all that extra energy I had. I just started and I grew and I grew and I grew with the sport and it turned into something that I love. How big are we doing it? You guys can do this too. Okay. Okay? Really heavy in the head snaps and the setups to the single into the double really quick, okay? And you could probably work somehow work your cross ankles in that way as well. So we do a school program. So I wrestled, the high school kids came and coached me, and then I did two local tournaments, and then I went to PEI that year for our little Canadies, which is a nationals, and then I got invited to be part of the Matt Rat team, and I've been part of the Matt Rats and Team Redford ever since. Redford's known as a hockey town. It's birthplace of the NHL, they all know that. No one seems to see the wrestling aspect. I even have kids to this date that didn't know about it until they started through their school program. So with this rural community we are, there was a lot of support from within it to produce athletes that are gonna go further on. It seemed like there was a lot of emphasis on us to do really well, but the support from the coaches, from the parents, from the community as a whole part was really, really strong. And no matter if we failed or if we did really, really well, they were always there supporting us and helping us to get to the next step in our sport. If it was helping us on tag days to raise money to get a bus to go to PEI, or if it was giving us extra bottles so we could cash them in to put those funds towards these trips, or even if it was, hey, we saw you in the newspaper, congratulations guys, you did really, really well. I found it was almost better in a rural community because everyone knew who you were and what you were doing, and they were there to support you no matter what. Ray and Phil both qualified for another Olympic Games, Moscow, but they boycotted that in 1980. So, so really, they qualified for three Olympic Games each. So, but they didn't have uh, women's judo in the Olympic Games when I competed. So, otherwise, the three of us would have gone in '84 to LA. But so they put it in the following Olympic Games. But I had already retired, so I. But I was able to go as a coach, women's coach. So it was great. I still got that Olympic experience. It was a struggle, I think, to get it into the Olympic Games in 1984. They put in synchronized swimming and rhythmic gymnastic instead of women's judo because they felt that more people would watch the synchro swimming and rhythmic gymnastics. You know, they're more feminine sports as well. I think they put a high precedence on, on spectatorship. Yeah, it was very disappointing because I would have gone to the Olympics with my brother Ray in wrestling and Phil in judo, so the three of us would have competed in LA. Competing was a very, very fulfilling experience for me. I got to meet a lot of great people, make a lot of friends, visit a lot of countries and experience different cultures. I had to train really hard to get on the team and stay on the team. It was uh, something I don't, don't regret, you know. When I won the World University Championships, it felt like 20 years of sweat and tears was, was worth it <laughs> for that one moment to uh, stand on the podium with your uh, national anthem. In France and in Japan, judo is seen as a very prestigious sport, so when I went there, it was like I was a celebrity, but and then you come back to Canada and there's uh, nobody really even knows what judo was at that time. I competed in the first Canadian Women's Championships in Montreal in 1976. And after that, we started competing internationally. But unfortunately, because women's judo wasn't an Olympic sport, there was no funding from Sport Canada. Finally, in 1980, they had the first Women's World Championships and I placed fifth. So I was able to get what you call a B card, that was for non-Olympic sports, but I had to maintain a top five in the world for that, but that opportunity opened the door to uh, allow women to get Sport Canada funding. It helped me go through university. I was also um, selected to be uh, the first women's national coach 
Um, I went through a coaching apprenticeship program and it was a three-year program that ended up me coaching at the uh, Olympic Games. I was training a lot of the women's national team at our club in Ottawa because uh, one, of our, one of our members was going to the Olympic Games and a lot of women moved to Ottawa so that they could train with me and her. We had a really good uh, women's space at that time because uh, prior to that uh, the women were not exactly ignored but they didn't have um, somebody really focusing on the women you know it wasn't seen as important so I think that really helped boost the uh, the level of the women's national team we're gonna practice really hard tonight though right because we've got Canada East in two weeks yeah. and everyone knows the tournament this weekend is cancelled yeah. okay you guys ready yeah. Through our high school program, we were required to volunteer with the little kids and to help them coach at the elementary schools. So I started that when I was in grade nine, and then I went for my coaching certification when I was 16. And then I just happened to be involved with little kids every once in a while. I went to New Brunswick with them when I was in grade 11. And then I went to my first year of university, kind of realized at that point that I wasn't as good as I thought I was, and that maybe my future wasn't as an athlete. So I moved back home from Ottawa and I started coaching with this senior team. And I was getting involved and then I went fully for my full certification so I could coach at a national level. And I was able to move from the high school kids where I could help them uh, compete at nationals in Calgary to Ontario Winter Games and Ontario Summer Games to the younger kids where now I'm forming and helping to build their skills when they're grade seven and under. But it was, it was difficult because you still want to get in there and you still want to wrestle. But as I'm getting older, I'm realizing I can't do as much as I wanted to or as much as I thought I can anymore. It also puts you in this point of power where you're now in charge of, in my case, 52 kids. So it makes you grow up really quick and try to realize almost in myself, I look at where I went wrong when I was training and how I can fix that in these kids that I'm training now. So my head has to be in here. I'm shooting through. Yeah. Okay, so I'm here. This just becomes a pulley system. I'm pulling and I'm lifting. So I don't even have to roll her. I can just do this and she's gonna go. Okay? As an athlete, I thought I knew everything in the sport and I thought I knew moves and I didn't have to change them. But as a coach, the biggest thing is realizing that there's always room for growth. And though you think you know all these moves, there's these small technical aspects that almost no one gets right because they're always changing there's always adjustments to make or for example I have short arms so I can't do the moves the same way somebody that who has longer arms can do so you have to be able to adjust and as a wrestler I didn't see these adjustments that the coaches were making when they were teaching me so now I'm able to see them and hopefully I'm making the correct adjustments we're gonna switch it up we're gonna do some wrestling yeah. the biggest difference is I find I yell a lot more five four Our senior team is composed of mainly girls, so I'm almost living vicariously through them. So I see how they're competing, and I see the level of dedication that I had as an athlete, but they have so much more, and it, they have so much more opportunity right now because there's more gyms, and there's more CrossFit training, and there's different aspects for them to do, but I teach the girls how I wrestled. So through them, I can see, for example, our national champion, she loves throws. I love throws when I was a wrestler. So I'm able to see through her, kind of the things I like to do, tweak them to her ability and help her that way. But it's also seeing the challenges that they face now in high school that are the same ones that I faced when I was in high school and kind of helping them through those challenges and feeling as though like, I always feel as though I'm an older sister to the girls too. So they're a part of the family. I think it's the stigma that everyone says that girls can't do this, that you know we're not strong enough, or it's a boys sport, that sort of stigma, because they want to prove them wrong. We're girls, we can do this. It's not just a guy sport. We're a lot tougher than you think. We find that a lot of our young girls, they come in, they want to learn something new, they want to prove to everyone out there that you know they can do this too, especially if they've had older brothers that have done this, and the brothers go, oh, we're tough, like, you're just a girl, and they come in and they prove them wrong. Not only challenges in the sport, but as like a teenager who's female, 
in wrestling you wear a very very tight spandex singlet so it's the body conscious self of it as well where perhaps the boy on our team doesn't feel that as much but the girls have to be able to be comfortable in who they are in order to compete in the sport because you're you're in a really really tight suit and you're all over the place and girls I find learn differently than boys the way I'm able to coach the girls is through how I was coached and how I felt and I had male coaches when I was in high school and there was always things that would happen where I'd feel that they didn't understand or people would say for the boy on our team it appears to be more appropriate for him to be a wrestler where the girls it's kind of they're shuffled to the side because they're they're female um, so I fe feel like they face a lot of different challenges it's hard to see the challenges that they face because a lot of it is behind closed doors what is Rondori? Maisie? <laughs> right? Yes, no? Drum fighting. No. Rondori is free practice. Okay, so that means you practice your techniques. When you want to throw backward, it's a good idea to pull or fake like you're going to go forward and then you go backward. Use the kazushi here and then throw. I think there's still a stereotype, a stigma. Um, about women doing it. I see that in the, uh, our clients. Uh, they'll enroll their boys into judo and they'll say, oh, the girls are doing dance. I think we still have that. I think it's still a very male-dominated sport. We only have about maybe 20% females doing it. <laughs> It has changed and improved a lot though. Uh, now there's a lot of funding for women's team and especially for women's wrestling because the women wrestlers have done very well internationally. They thought that it's too rough for girls or that girls shouldn't be doing that kind of activity. It's not, not feminine. When in actual fact, I think that girls need it more than the boys. A lot of girls aren't naturally aggressive. Some tend to be a bit on the passive side. Okay, good work everybody. Erica Weeb, my dad and myself have known her since I was competing in high school and she recently, last Olympics, won gold. Even though we're an hour away, it was like a local feeling, like she was part of our team, we've known her forever. So it's watching these athletes who the kids know, who have came and done clinics with us, watch them win, which is growing the sport, and it's more media attention, and there's just more access to the sport. So it's little boys will be watching, and little girls will be watching all these videos online, and they see, they oh, I wanna try that. So they'll come out and they'll try, but it's also, I think when Erica Weeb won gold, it brought a lot more attention for the girls because it showed that here's this local girl who trained in Ottawa her almost her whole life before she moved away. She just won a gold medal in wrestling. Like, we can do this, she can do this, let's grow this sport. They wanted to pull wrestling out of the Olympics. They, that, that was it, they wanted to cut it, it wasn't bringing enough media attention. And it banded the whole wrestling community all over the world together to stop it. So there was a huge petition. There was outreach from Ontario to Australia. It was, everyone was making their videos and saying, you need to stop this. Like this sport has been here since the beginning of the Olympics. It's, it's one of the original sports and it needs to continue because it's only growing strength. So since then, we've banded together and tried to reach out more and more and more to media, to schools, to everything we can to help grow the sport. But it's also, Word of mouth is a big thing in our little town. So you have a friend that wrestles and then he tells you how good it is and then he tells his sister and then his sister tells her friend. So it's just, we're lucky in the small town aspect where everyone talks, so everyone finds out about the sport and that's how we're at home growing it to be what it is right now. The angle of your kazushi should be more towards your baby toe. Yeah, bend, bend your... Um... A little bit more this way, towards me. Like advance your foot like this, so that your other foot. Okay. Yeah. There. There.
There's a lot of great instructors in other big cities like Toronto and Montreal. To have such a high level person in Ottawa, like such as my mom. Yeah, definitely had a big impact on uh, the level of martial arts in Ottawa. Like almost all uh, the big, biggest judo names from Ottawa have been coached, at least at some point by my mom, so. All right, we'll do a little bit of uh, Neweza. Okay, so we'll just start with um, one person will be on their back. And so you're gonna start like this, but one thing you can do is come underneath here, press down and put into a hold here. So from the outside, inside, press, come in, come up. Liam, you can go first. There's no lack of motivation here. There's big, uh, big shoes to fill already, so it doesn't need to push us. It's a really good role model, I would say especially a woman that's involved in such a high level uh, ranking in judo and uh, you know above like all the males especially like I find that's pretty cool and she's like the first in like so many things as a Canadian as well like and being such a good competitor and a uh, coach as well so I think that's pretty cool. At first, it was I wanted to compete, I wanted to try something new. Now it's, I can have a really, really bad day and I can come out here and just even play with the horses in the field and it's a, it's like a stress reliever. Everything is just gone. It's like a deep breath. Two, three, go. Yeah. Good boy. It's, it's one of those things where it's hard to explain till you kind of feel the same connection with a horse or just play with a dog or a cat or something. It's that serenity and the quietness and the connection that you get. It's good, my coach is pretty awesome, so she, she's not scared to yell at me, which is what I need and what I do with my kids. Um, but it's also good because it stuff that she does here, like little techniques, I can bring back to my wrestlers. So things, even sometimes we do cardio stuff here, just because it is a lot of core and a lot of stamina to keep going around the ring, I can bring that stuff back to my kids that I coach. And we've even, there's a whole bunch of trails back where we are so we can take the kids up here and we can run. So it's kind of, we work both ways. And a lot of the kids that I coach now, there's one rides here now and there's another one, her older sister might be starting here. So it's just the connection between, I think the competitiveness and just continuing to learn and grow in sports. It's so fulfilling as a, you know, their teacher sensei to see them out there having fun and and uh, being so focused and and feeling good about it. And it's really great. It makes it uh, all worthwhile, you know. And yeah, no, I I, I love it. It's great. Yeah!